Well, Canada Reads 2020 is happening this week. Two contenders have been eliminated and three are still in the running for the title of One Book to Bring Canada into Focus. Now, to get an idea of each of the books that made this year's Canada Reads list, we asked five avid readers to pick up the novels to review for us. Joanne Temple read Son of a Trickster by Edna Robinson. Jeff Barrett, Radicalized by Corey Doctorow. Kathy Lynn Lee, Small Game Hunting at the Local Coward Gun Club by Megan Gale Coles. Wayne Button, From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle. And Lisa Parmeter, We Have Always Been Here by Samra Hibid. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we have all five of you on here this morning, so this is going to get pretty interesting, but we're going to start with Jeff. You you chose the book Radicalized by Corey Doctorow. It was the first book to be eliminated this week from Canada Reads. What did you like and dislike about this book? Um, so uh, it was very, very, very current for uh, 2020. I think this book actually came out maybe a little late last year. Um there are a number of things that make this so current for, for 2020. Uh, one of the, it's the four stories in the book. And one of them is about uh, kind of a pandemic, kind of uh, global catastrophe at the, uh, in the near future. Um, uh, so obviously that's uh, pretty, uh, pretty important for nowadays. Uh, one of them is about uh, the ever encroaching uh, power of corporations, which is pretty uh, prevalent for today. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And, and like, I finished the book uh, just as quarantine ended, so uh, it was very uh, powerful as I was reading it. Did you find it strange to be reading a book on that topic during these strange times? Yes, very much so. Uh, and, like, I, I just, you know, kind of stuck in my bubble hadn't seen too many people for a while, and I was reading this book about how uh, this guy builds a, a fortress in the woods uh, to get away from this uh, disaster that's happening. He brings a couple people. I won't ruin the story, but uh, it doesn't end well. So <laughs> it was an interesting to read while I was sitting in my place by myself. Sounds like it would be. Jeff, were you surprised that it was eliminated from Canada Read so soon in the competition? A little bit. Uh, I thought, you know, especially with how, like I said, how current it is, uh, I was a little di disappointed. But seeing how it was for short stories, I guess uh, you couldn't quite invest in the characters as much as a, as a true novel um, where you have a scene the whole way through. This was kind of for independent stories. Um, so I'm, I'm not super surprised. I'm disappointed, but I'm not super surprised. Now, yesterday's elimination was one that I personally thought might stay in the running a little longer. It was From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle. Wayne, that's the novel you read. What do you think this, why do you think this book was voted out? Well, I mean, uh, I was a little bit disappointed as well. Um, they did make some good points about why they thought it'd be voted out. Uh, you know, one of the panelists said it's almost like a scab that you continuously keep picking. Uh, so that kind of hit home with me because it's true, because Jesse Tissel, although he does literally rise from the ashes and, and does well in life, he keeps falling and falling and falling and failing and failing and failing. And I guess maybe they found that theme a little redundant. And I don't know, I guess they wanted to read a book that would pick them up uh, with their with their mood. And, and that's not really what Jesse Tissel is about. It's about being vulnerable and telling his story. So, yeah, I was really disappointed to hear it was eliminated, but I understand where the panelists were kind of coming from a little bit. Who would you recommend this book to, Wayne? I mean, I'd recommend this to anybody. It, uh, to me, it's a great Canadian story, uh, especially anybody who maybe is down and out and feels like they can't rise above things to find out that there is a way. I mean, the great thing about it is it's a memoir, but it's not a memoir about a celebrity per se. It's an everyday story of a man who rises up. So I think it's something that everybody can really read, to be honest. Now, Kathy Lynn, small game hunting at the local Coward Gun Club has been doing very well since its release. It's won the BMO Winter Set Award. It was a finalist for Scotiabank Giller Prize, named Globe and Mail Book of the Year, and it's a number one bestseller. The author, Megan Gail Coles, is also from Newfoundland and Labrador. She set the story in St. John's. How did this book measure up to all the hype that it's getting? 
I think she did a really great job, and I think it does measure, measure up to the hype for sure. There's a lot of different characters um, in the book, which makes for a very interesting read, as well as their interactions um, between each other and also at the, the restaurant they're all working at. Um, personally, I I didn't really care for it, and I'm actually, I know it's been debated a lot. Um, on the Ken Reed series, and I'm surprised it's still in the running, but um, they've been de debating it well and uh, st still keeping it there. Why did you not care for it? Um, I like to read for pleasure, and I found it, um, I guess the reality, it, the characters are so real, and I know a lot of these things have happened. Um, they've had a lot of things happen to them in their development, and I know there are people who can relate to that, but I didn't really relate to it. So it, it's a little, the, the characters, I guess, are all flawed, like we all are, but in ways that I'm not familiar with, so I didn't relate to a lot of them. And is that something you look for when you're reading a novel, something you can relate to? I do. I, I like to kind of place myself in, in the area and, and what the characters are going through, and I couldn't with some of the characters. Um, and I do like to read for, for pleasure, I guess, with the world we're living in, and, and there's so much darkness in that, that I do like to be a little bit more uplifted. Now, we've seen two days of voting by the celebrities defending each book, and so far, Son of a Trickster by Edna Robinson and We Have Always Been Here have not been nominated for elimination by anyone. Joanne, you read Son of a Trickster. What's it about, and why do you think it's still in the running? Um, the book is about, it follows um, a uh, young teen um, who lives in a very chaotic world. And we follow his journey. Um, we meet some of his friends who are from uh, a different class than him. And I really enjoyed the characters, I have to say. Um, I guess because I have a, a young girl myself, 15 years old, that I could relate to some of the things that he was going through. Um, however, midway through the book, it lost me. I didn't know what was going on. I felt like um, maybe I was supposed to be educated before I read it because when I picked the book out, the title caught my interest and I read the back and I went for it. But what I didn't know was that it's like a mystical kind of book and I didn't know in the, in the story if, if it was like a cultural thing happening to the main character or if it was... Um, I didn't know what it was, actually. It was, it was hard to get through, to be honest. I'm not sure why it hasn't been eliminated. Now, you said you feel that you probably should have been educated before reading it. Educated in what way? What, what is the topic that you think you should have known before you read it? Well, as I was reading it, I was wondering if I was missing something, like if I was supposed to know some of the Aboriginal culture in a deeper way so i didn't know if it was like cultural things happening to him and i didn't understand but after listening to uh yesterday's clip i i realized then that um it's I, it's not sci-fi but it's magic so i didn't know that maybe if i had known it going in i would have enjoyed it a little better you would have had a more open mind about it yes that's right now, Lisa, how about you? Why or why not will We Have Always Been Here take the win in this year's Canada Reads 2020? Well, I, I really think that uh, We Have Always Been Here is, is going to be one of the top contenders. I think this is, a, this is a really great book. It's the kind of book you can pick up your, your cup of chai tea and sit down and really journey with Samra as she develops from um, her, her life in Pakistan to Canada to adulthood through um, understanding herself and her queerness and just really watching her grow from a victim and a victim of sexual assault, religious wars, et cetera, into a very strong, independent woman. And I, I really think that this book speaks to um, Canadian women. It speaks to immigrants. It speaks to people of color. It speaks to people who identify uh, as queer. And I, and I really think this is a top contender. It's an enjoyable read. Um, and uh, it, it's... Um, it's something, it's really good. It's, uh, it's a great read. What was it about the book that drew you to read it in the first place? Um, well, I just, I love that it was a, a queer 
memoir of a woman who was Muslim. I was like, that sounds really interesting. And um, and then as I got into it, I really I, I love the um, I, re- I love the religious undertones that went through the entire book. Um, it it kind of became the backbone of the book and um, trying to understand your identity um, within a religious group uh, can be challenging at times. And uh, and I and I understand that I relate to that and um, and I think that's why I picked it and probably why I enjoyed it as much as I did. Now, Lisa, you've also been watching the debate over which book should be crowned, one to book to bring Canada into focus. What do you think of how the books are debated? Um, you know, I've been talking about this, and, and I've been reading a couple blogs, and I've been watching some uh, some of the uh, people on Instagram and YouTube who've been re- uh, reflecting on it. And I think that, um, uh, you know, this... This year, we're going to make history. This is the first year in all of the years that Canada Reads has been happening that a female author is going to win defended by a woman. And, um, you know, there's a lot on the line. And when these authors um, and these celebrities come in and they uphold these books, there's a lot on the line for them. And, you know, some of them are coming in hot. But, um, you know, I was reminded yesterday as I was reading one of the blogs that, you know, this often happens uh, that, that the men hold the position of power. And this year, the tables have switched. I think it's a little uncomfortable to watch it for people who, who don't like that power in other hands. Um, but you know what? I think it's a good debate, and uh, um, I, I, I'm, I'm loving what Amanda's putting out. Uh, a lot of people are hating on her, but uh, I'm, I'm really I'm really proud how she's defending this book and, uh, and speaking from a place of truth. So. Now, Wayne, as Labrador Morning's in-house book reviewer, what do you make of the competition? Yeah, I mean, I tuned in as well, and I found it actually way more intense than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I thought it was great how they weren't just dilly-dallying around topics, and they were getting right at it and getting at each other. And uh, I think it's a great concept for the show. I don't know if if CBC actually planned it to be that way or just naturally evolved organically, but... uh, no, I think it's great. If anybody hasn't watched it, they should definitely tune in because it really changes your perspective on uh, the book. And it also encourages you to read other books. Like after watching a few episodes, there's at least three other ones I think I'll probably read in the future just because of some of the things they said to defend it. Jeff, what about you? Do you have any predictions of which book will be crowned Canada Reads 2020 this Thursday? Uh, no, because uh, my book got kicked out, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're done with the competition? You're not watching it anymore? Yeah. No, this is it's a great competition just because it highlights different Canadian authors. Uh, you know, something other than Margaret Atwood or Mordecai Richler or somebody. It's great to see uh, Canadian authors highlighted. Kathy Lynn, what about you? What's your thoughts on the competition? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if smoking hunting at the local Coward Gun Club uh, wins it, actually, um, just based on uh, Megan's writing. And uh, like I said, a lot of the characters in that, I think, are very relatable uh, for the majority of people across Canada. Joanne, your prediction? Um, I think that the We Have Always Been Here is going to take it based on what I've heard Lisa say. Uh, I definitely want to pick that one up. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us this morning. It's been very interesting to hear your thoughts on these books. And I just want to know, are you guys all going to switch now and read each other's books? I mean, I might pick up, I might pick up two or three of them, actually, and, and read them after hearing about it, to be honest, yeah. Well, we look I'm forward... I'm going to pick up my list now. Um, the other ones I've read, uh, so I've read a lot, but I'm not feeling that. <laughs> I've been definitely interested in a, a queer Muslim woman's journey. Uh, that's probably pretty interesting. Well, certainly lots of content to, to be read. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Thank Anna. you. And that is Joanne Temple. She read Son of a Trickster by Edna Robinson. Jeff Barrett, Radicalized by Corey Doctorow. Kathy Lynn Lee, Small Game Hunting at the Local Coward Gun Club by Megan Gale Coles. Wayne Button, From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle. And Lisa Parmeter, We Have Always Been Here by Emra Habib.